good afternoon. St. Anthony of Padua's parish family welcomes all who have gathered for our liturgy on the 21st Sunday of Ordinary Time. Join with us as we lift our voices in praise and thanksgiving to our Almighty Father. You are kindly requested at this time to turn off all electronic devices, including cell phones. This liturgy is being offered for the happy repose of the soul of Vincent Jim Rossioli on the first anniversary of his passing. A reminder that all hymns, prayers, and readings for today's Mass can be found in the bulletin. Let us begin our prayer by joining in singing the Church's One Foundation. Please stand. Where true gladness is found. 
Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever. Him and for him are 
all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Amen. A reading from St. Paul tells us that from God, through God, and for God are all things. God has given us His Son, His Church, and each other. We have been baptized as a child of God into the Church, established by Christ with Peter as the rock of foundation and the source of the sacraments to receive God's grace. Through the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit, we receive that power and strength of His grace from the sacraments of the Church and from the strength of this community of faith, which is encompassed in the gift that we call Church. Our recent pandemic has affected the lives of every single individual in our world, and of course that includes our Church. And given the challenges that we all face, I'd like to give a brief state of our union, or state of our local Church, our parish family, St. Anthony's, for this last fiscal year. So for a financial summary, summary, I'm grateful for the generosity and dependability of many of our faithful parishioners here. Through the offering of online giving, which has been established, people mailing in and dropping off their envelopes, our financial report turned out to be okay. The Sunday collections and total income were down but expenses were less than budgeted and we still were able to stay in the line. Sunday collections give you an idea, as of half of the fiscal year, December 31st, were right on budget, but the time that we finished, we experienced a $26,000 loss, which would be expected given the pandemic. You know, total revenues for the entire year were $42,000 less 
that on this budget, that we take that and things like the morning to have our festa, other fundraising things, and also Easter too, because Easter took a little bit of a hit from all of the extra people that would contribute at Easter that we don't always see all the time. You know, as I said, the expenses were under budget. We budgeted more to do, and more of all we did was okay. What I gave out last year, I'm going to be putting on the internet, but I do have a few copies in the back if anybody is interested in seeing the comparison over the last six years. It also shares the Bishop's Annual Appeal, which we have, which our parish has contributed thirty-four thousand dollars for. Um, it's down to two thousand dollars from last year. But we also only have 213 contributions to the Bishop's Annual Appeal. And last year, or, or last year we had 213 contributions. This year, only 168. We're down almost 20% less in the number of contributions. I'll give you some statistical information. I'm still doing about one funeral per week. I'm doing about one baptism per month. But the, 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 the irony is the total number of families in our parish actually increased last year by 19. But we've seen an increased total number of families, but the total number of people in our family, in our parish family, actually decreased by 60. So you can assume that that's from people that are either moving away from home, kids like that, or maybe one spouse or one member of the family dying and the other person is there. Okay. I want to give you an update on some of the projects that we had. Last year, we had finished doing the shingles, the gutters, and the siding on the rectory. The LED lights are completed in the church, but we still have the dimmers to do. So occasionally we'll see a light go on and off. That will be corrected when we get the dimmers fixed. And we also were able to get a proposal in that would actually fix the elevator in the parish center. That elevator that hasn't worked for the last 20 years. So they're halfway done and doing that. It's amazing. At a decent price, but half of that cost also went into this past year's budget as well, too. So the projects that are in the works is that we are going to do some concrete work outside the rectory garage. Again, complete the work of the elevator. In the school, there will be several of the sinks and the toilets are going to be replaced in each of the bathrooms and the removal of the non working ones. And then finally, we're also getting we're also going to implement Wi-Fi into the church and increased strength, signal strength of, uh, in the parish center for the downstairs hall as well. We've also signed an agreement of sale for the farmland that the parish has owned for the last 40 years and has been unable to use for anything except subletting it to farmers and renting it, the rent which covers the cost that we have to pay for our taxes. And we were approached by the County Conservancy Commission to be able to see if we would sell it to them so that they can preserve and protect the land so that everyone will be able to have access to this land when they develop walking trails, hiking, other types of things that will actually, I think, be so beneficial for so many people. And if all goes well, someone will be by the end of the year. And those proceeds will, from the sale will be invested for our parish. And for our future needs. So there have been so many things that have been canceled, rescheduled, and modified. The things that have been canceled beginning with back in March, after we had all the food and the setup and everything was done for St. Joseph's Day table, we had to cancel that at the last minute. We had to cancel Festa, the parish family picnic. And don't worry, you'll hear me say only five dollars next year, I promise you. The Holy Cross picnic will not be held this year, and our parish retreat also will not be held this year. But what we did we do in the meantime? So in May, when we still were in open for public masses, we did the virtual May crowd, which many people saw at the beginning of May. We also did, once the churches started to open, a pseudo 40 hours, where we had a speaker. We had about 20 to 30 people. We actually had the mass for St. Anthony without procession. The blessing of the bread it was very, very nice. Religious education was put on hold beginning of March when the pandemic started. So in terms of RCIA, our two candidates could not receive the sacraments at the Easter Vigil, but they did come into full communion with the church on July 5th. Our first Holy Communion class was able to receive the sacraments in May. They were able 
to receive their first full communion on July 25th. Religious education will begin in September for the eighth grade confirmation class and the first week in October for the rest of the students. We are planning to come back in person, but also to have a virtual option, another good reason for having the Wi-Fi in the church and school. None of our organizations have been meeting, with the exception of some that are trying to do virtually or meet at some of the homes or whatever, but not here because we still have not had clearance to have meetings yet here at the parish center. And some Pacho like we at St. Anthony's also will have their menace for some Pacho but not the procession as they normally would have. So where are we in terms of the sacraments? In terms of baptisms, you know, I finally held my first baptism since the pandemic broke this past weekend. And they're all the ones that have been kind of on hold, have been rescheduled. And baptism classes are now being conducted again. <clears throat> weddings, I had four pre-pandemic weddings. I had two that, have, that should have occurred between the, when pandemic started and now. One has rescheduled and one was held with having all 10 people here for their wedding. And I did so that on Zoom and everything. And it was actually very, very beautiful. Okay, and I still have four weddings scheduled till the end of the year, and they're all scheduled where to go, but a couple of them are going to be without receptions afterwards. Confirmation. Confirmation will be held this year here on October 27th with Bishop Schler, with St. Anthony's and Our Lady of Mercy. Obviously, the number of people that can be invited are going to be restricted, and it will be a prayer service, not a mass. The anointing of the sick, I am always ready and able to come to someone's house to give somebody anointing of the sick. Or if you're going on an operation and would like to have that, please contact me. I'm happy to do that. The challenge comes in hospitals and nursing homes. You know the deals with both of them. The hospitals, I'm always willing to go, but many of the hospitals are set up that if I go as your pastor, I may count as that one healthy visitor that a non-COVID patient may have that day, and no family may visit that day. There are chaplains that can give, Catholic chaplains that are able to give the sacrament of sacred hospitals. And of course, the nursing homes, you know, they have their own rules, and it's hard for a family to get in, let alone anyone else. Confessions. I've been hearing confessions from 3 to 3.30 on Saturday, and after all the weekend masses, if I am able to, if I don't have something else that's pressing or pending afterwards, but always by arrangement of the two. Now I'm also about the Eucharist. From March 22nd until the beginning of June, no public masses were able to be held. We've been live streaming and taking all of our masses, including the daily masses, right from the very beginning, and we will continue to do so. And we've actually done this for many of the funerals and weddings as well during the pandemic. And watching Mass on TV, as you all know, is not the same. We need to be able to receive the Eucharist if we are able to do so. So offering the Eucharist to the homebound has always been an option to the church. But many people may not be what you would call homebound, but may feel restricted now. And so I recently sent out a letter and a survey that also addressed primarily for this, to get a pulse of the parish, for your comfort level in order that I might help distribute and administer the Eucharist to you. So weekday Masses that we have are generally 15 to 25 people on our weekday Masses. Weekend Masses we're getting right now about 60 to 80 people. With that survey with the communion, I'm, I'm, I'm asking, have you felt comfortable enough to come back to, back to Mass? Would you feel comfortable if you could just come to a weekday mass where there are fewer people? Are you comfortable enough to go out? Would you like to come to the parish center at a scheduled time for just you to come into the chapel and I will give you communion there? Or I will go out to your car and give you communion that way? Or would you like me to come to your home? I will come to your home. I will meet you at your front step or come into your house. And if you're not comfortable yet, that's okay. But I want to make sure that you know all the options that are available there. Now, my plan is now, first, is to continue to pray. Pray that this gets better. But, unfortunately, it looks like we're going to have this for a while. So to keep everybody comfortable, I want to be able to at least try to keep the pandemic practices of wearing masks and 
social distancing in place to make everybody feel more comfortable. So my plan is that if attendance goes up on this mass, and you can see, we don't have a whole lot more, you know, room right here, right now to go. You know, we're gonna go up, but what are we gonna do, okay? So first option, now you notice I talked about the elevator, I talked about live stream, I talked about Wi-Fi and all of the other things. The second, the first option would be, once we get the power center with the elevator, which will all be done in a matter of weeks, hopefully, to be able to live stream the mass at the same time of the mass, so that if we fill, you can still go to the parish center, to the basement, watch at the same time, and receive communion, because I've got the chapel there. So that would be option A. If I'm not able to go to option A, my other option is option B, is to be offer a third mass on Sunday, which would probably be Sunday afternoon. But if I do something like that, then I would probably have to go to the sign up genius that we started with before, where you would have to call up ahead of time to see if there is room for you in the mass. I'm only doing that to try to make everybody comfortable. And hopefully, if we all continue to pray hard, we won't even have to worry about this. And again, if I go to a third mass, it will be temporary because we certainly normally have plenty of room to accommodate everybody else if we need to. Our mass times have shifted a little bit, if you've noticed that. Our masses during the week on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday are at 8.30 in the morning. It's a change from 8 o'clock. Monday is still 6.30 p.m. Sunday mass times are at 8 and 10.30, and I am considering moving the 10.30 mass to 11. And I know that there are problems and goodnesses about doing that. One of the reasons is, is because of school. If I have to dismiss the students one grade at a time, dismissal will take a little bit longer to keep everybody distance. You can't just say, all right, kids, there you go, and boom, just watch them go. And so doing that, it may just cause, with people coming and everything else, I may need to push the mass off a little bit more. If I have a third mass, like I said, I probably would go to something like 4.30 in the afternoon. And again, that would be a mass that would have no music or anything, but just a mass at 4.30. Uh, mass on Saturday is still, at this time, at 4 p.m. I want to hear your feedback from the survey. I want to know how comfortable you are. I want to know your thoughts. I want to know what can we do to make it better for you. Maybe it's a suggestion. Maybe it just needs some reassurance for us as to how we're doing and why we're doing what we're doing. I have a limited amount of time now. I know I'm speaking a lot from time. Joe's taking it. All of this will be put in word form that will go either in print or also on our website. So you can read this again or see it again if you've missed something. So we're also working on a combination of a virtual live retreat mission. Deacon Ken and I and some of the parishioners have been doing that for the last two weeks. It can work where we can kind of do this virtually and in place. So we're going to see what we can do. And I'm also trying to work on a video. This is kind of funny. Work on a video of what to expect to tell people. It was a suggestion from the pastoral council. But the funny part is, you know what I'm asking right now? My eight-year-old Greek nieces and nephews, I put together a movie this summer. And if they can do it, how do they stream all these videos? How do you use iMovie on my iPad, you know, and all this other stuff? They know how to do it, so I may be asking them for how to put those videos together. I want to give a shout out. A shout out to some of my volunteers and to my staff. Now, let's talk about the shout out. We've got the end of times. You know that even in the midst of a pandemic, some of our faithful volunteers are still going to St. Harbor and other places providing meals for those who need it, even in the midst of the pandemic. I want to shout out to my staff as well who have been, you know, virtually doing anything I ask, you know, in terms of not necessarily doing what we expected to do, because we've got to do what we can do in order to try to be able to make it work. And the same thing holds with all the volunteers that are helping here at Mass now. You know, we got like Josie and Paul today are doing things here that I normally wouldn't do. Normally, if they would be here or just stepping in and doing what they need. But I still may need a few more volunteers, so if you 
fill up a survey and say, I don't want to mind committing to something like that. To help people, to instruct people when they come in, to log them in, to see people, to direct people, to help disinfect between noises, because you know we do that in between every mess, to be able to disinfect, to make sure that everybody feels safe. You know, the church comes from God, and the church is constituted by God. You know, for people in society that don't go to church or from a secular perspective, they might see church just as a voluntary organization of like-minded individuals, but from God's perspective, it is quite something else. The church is the body of Christ. The church is the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. That church is that special and sacred entity cut out from human, ordinary time and space in which we humbly receive from God that which he wishes to give us. Why do we have a church? Why do we have sacraments? Some people answer because, well, the church decided we need them, or that we've been fashioning the sacrament of our own taste and we modify them as we see fit, but they are wrong. If the church was only simply a human construct, it would have been wiped off the face of the earth centuries ago. Because no human institution could possibly have survived the attacks on the church from within and from without were it not given us by God and enjoying his favor, his protection, and his promise. I don't have to tell you, the church is an awesome gift from God. And the promise given by Jesus to Peter 2,000 years ago is still good today. It is still working. And it is still as strong as ever. Remember those words. And I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall never prevail against it. The lady says, Teach, and observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of time. Thank you.
as one who perished him. We pray to the Lord, Lord that the sick, the poor, and the lonely may find the consolation of God's presence and the love of his people. We pray to the Lord, Lord for all who have died, especially Vincent, Jim Rossioli, and all the recent ministers, that they may find joy and honor as they enter into eternal peace with the righteous. We pray to the Lord. Lord, and for all the intentions that we hold close to our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, and now for the book of prayers you have for your body's heaven. Most merciful, kind God, we come to you in our weakness, we come to you in our fear, we come to you in trust, for you alone are our hope. We place before you the disease present in our world, but we turn to you in a time of need. Bring wisdom to doctors who understand it to scientists, and down caregivers with compassion and generosity. Bring healing to those who are ill, protect those who are most at risk, give comfort to those who have lost a loved one, welcome those who have died to return to home. Stabilize our communities, unite us in our compassion, remove all fear from our hearts, fill us with confidence in your care. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen.
for this is my body which will be given for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
for those who don't get it, it's the the for an able to receive the Holy Eucharist. I'll now pray the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe in your presence in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive the sacrament of come with me spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself fully to you. Never permit me to separate from you.
the healing work of your mercy, and graciously proclaim to sustain us, so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks to you. Let us pray the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the Lord. We are our Christian Spirit. May God be with you. Rejoicing in the gift of the Eucharist, we join in singing, We Remember. <laughs> 